from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Please join us as we joyfully offer this prayer of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for the third week of Advent. Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, to your Immaculate Heart we consecrate ourselves in an act of total entrustment to the Lord. By you we will be led to Christ. By Him and with Him we will be led to the Father. We will walk in the light of faith and we will do everything so that the world may believe that Jesus Christ is the one sent by the Father. With him, we wish to carry his love and salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this televised Mass during the season of Advent. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Frida Nevis from Burnaby, British Columbia, in memory of her husband, Francis, and for the living and deceased relatives of, and friends. For all those who have lost everything in the floods in British Columbia and for our grandchildren to be successful in their careers. The second are Thomas and Norma de Souza from Dorval, Quebec, for the deceased members of their family and the health of body, mind, and spirit of the living members of their family. The third are Irma and Wes from Edmonton, Alberta, in memory of Herta Frank their daughter, Judy and Jack Morgan from Prince, Prince Pincher Creek, Alberta, and for the good health of Irma, Crystal, Mario, Alisa, Belinda, Rose, Arlene, and Karen, and for the intentions of Christopher and Jason, and for those who have no one to pray for them, and for the daily televised Mass. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass. And as we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ once again in our hearts, let us ask like Isaiah does in our first reading, come down, O just one from the heavens. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us to the rewards of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies read down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may spring up, and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it, he established it, he did not create it in a chaos, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness, 
a word that shall not return. To me every knee, knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength, all who were incensed against him, shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples of John the Baptist reported to him all that Jesus was doing. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is to come or are we to await another? When the men had come to Jesus, they asked, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, are you the one or are we to look for another? Jesus had just cured many people of their, diseases, of their diseases, plagues and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And Jesus answered, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in high school, I used to sing in the choir and the mass was entirely in Latin, 
couldn't understand a word, but we sang out with full joy, with full enthusiasm, everything, even though we didn't understand what it meant. Rorate celli de super et nubes pluant justum. Let the heavens burst open and the clouds rain down the just one, which is exactly what our cantor sang in the responsorial psalm. And it is in keeping with our Advent song, O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits your day. It is something that we have been wanting so badly in a special way after 18, 20 months in which we have suffered, which we have scarred, in which we have had wounds of all types. We need the Savior to come down to heal us, to bring peace, to bring quiet to us. But there are other issues as well. Because we had time to be at our homes, we realized that things like the way the indigenous people were treated, Black Lives Matter, every child counts. And the fact that we take women and give them second, we treat them in second rate, whether it is in sports, whether it's in the church, whether it's in the military, and their vision and their voice is not heard. And as a result, we in sports, in church, in society, have lost something vital. It's high time that we adjust that balance once again. And so we call on the Savior, the Just One, to come down and to put a balance in our society around us. But the Just One has already come, and many of us haven't paid attention to the fact Recently, I was in the mall, and everybody was sh uh, shopping for Christmas presents, and we were just getting into the elevator, and a lady came shouting, stop, stop, let me get in. And she had all the bundles and Christmas presents with her. And as she got in, she says, whoever started this Christmas business, I'd like to know who he is, and I'll kill him. And somebody from the back of the elevator said, we did that 2,000 years ago, and we continue to do it today. So sometimes we begin to realize that we get away with things like put Christ back into Christmas. We have bumper stickers which says, Christ is the reason for the season. Uh, we wish people happy Christmas rather than happy holiday. And we are content to be like that. But the fact is that Jesus Christ, even in his own time, was not understood as the just one, that the heavens opened and came to bring justice and balance into our world today. Jesus, even in his own time. We find John the Baptist sending his disciples, saying, are you the one, or should we wait for another? Scripture scholars says it's not John the Baptist, John the Baptist was a person who was very blunt in everything he did. He spoke to people. He con condemned anybody who committed sin. His belief was you did the crime, you did the time. And now suddenly he found that this Jesus, whom he proclaimed as the one whose thongs he was un unworthy to tie, is mixing with the sinners. He is compassionate, he is kind, he is merciful. Are you the one, or are we to wait for another? And so the story goes on. As long as you and I continue to be like Jesus, merciful and kind and open, people will always say, is he the Christian that we are supposed to look forward to? In our day and age, Pope Francis has been condemned right, left, and center by people in the pews, by priests, and even bishops. And they keep on asking him, just like Jesus uh, was asked, are you the one? Can we have gay marriages? Can we have divorced people who are uh, receiving communion? And Pope Francis does not seem to answer it because we've got the answers in canon law and in catechism. Let us go there, stop being lazy, and try to put uh, Pope Francis in a trap. They tried to do that to Jesus. Francis, Pope Francis will go to affirm the weak, comfort those who are wounded, and console those who are mourning. I want mercy, not just as Jesus said, and Francis does the same. If you and I were arrested for being Christians, would they find enough evidence to call us Christians, 
Or would they say, are you the one, or should we look for somebody else? God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For Christians everywhere called to witness God's love of, by joyful service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice in our society and world today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are suffering and in pain, for those who feel isolated, and for those who mourn a lost one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our sponsors and for all those in our televised faith community who have written in asking for prayers, especially for their children and grandchildren, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we await your away arrival with anticipation, with joy, and with peace. Continue to heal us in our weakness and in our woundedness. We make this prayer to our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our and the all of the church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for the day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints who are pleased, you have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Yours. Wherever you are, share with one another a sign of that peace and friendship. <clears throat>
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. <clears throat> Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. to earth, dispel the night, and show thy face, and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits a day, when hope shall sing its triumph, and sadness flee away. Thou whom nations sigh for, whom priests and prophets long foretold, will break the captive fetters, redeem the long lost fold. Sweet. The Mass, the mystery at the center of Salvation Study Guide, serves as a resource for Catholics who want to pass along the faith to others. Father Michael Coots reflects on how our Eucharistic celebration took its present form and why participation in the Mass can be transformational. For more information, please visit our website or call our office at 1-888-383-6277.